Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Using Mobile Learning Devices in and Out of the Classroom. Um, as people are joining us, I'm going to go ahead and turn the microphones off, um, except for the moderators there. Thank you, moderators, for helping us. Today we have um, our presenter is Scott Newcomb, and then we have several people providing additional support. My name is Sylvia Ellison, and we have Kelly Tinkale and Lisa Dabbs also moderating. Thank you for joining us all. Um, let me give you a bit, of a bit of background about our presenter. Uh, we're so excited to have this one this morning. Scott Newcomb has taught for 10 years and works with fourth graders at St. Mary's in, in Intermediate School in Ohio, USA. Uh, this is a public school in its third year using mobile learning devices with their students. Scott helped organize and participated in the first mobile learning technology conference in Ohio in May of 2009. Scott has helped with professional development training for staff members using smartphone computers. He has presented about mobile learning at the eTech Ohio Conference, Mobile Learning Technology Conference in Ohio 2009 to 2010, the OSBA Conference and the ISTE Conference in Denver, Colorado, USA. He has also conducted webinars on the topic of mobile learning for Class 2.0 Live and EdTech Talk. Um, I'll post his website later for you guys. But let's take a moment to welcome our presenter with a nice round of applause. And Scott, I'm going to turn my microphone off and pass everything off to you. All right, sounds good. Um, I'm really glad to be here. Um, first off, if you could just give me a smiley face if you could hear me okay, I'd appreciate it. All right, sounds good. Um, uh, my session is going to be um, using mobile learning devices in and outside the classroom. Um, as Sylvia said, um, I'm a fourth grade teacher in Ohio. Um, we've been using mobile learning devices the last three years, and um, we're going into our fourth year of our initiative. And um, it's just been a really good process, um, and I'd like to uh, tell you a little bit about it today. Um, just to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to take the video off for a little bit, and then uh, just so you can. Uh, look at the slides and everything while I'm talking. Um, on the slide, uh, we have uh, my Twitter handle, um, S, or S Nuco. Um, I try to share as many um, ideas and links about mobile learning every day. I maybe go a little bit overboard, but I'm, I'm very enthusiastic about mobile learning. Um, also, um, I have the, a website I created um, to help people get started with mobile learning, and it has a lot of links, and um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, what is mobile learning? Uh, mobile learning is the ability to learn anywhere um, at any time. Um, it can involve all kinds of different um, types of devices. Um, for example, we use smartphones. A lot of people are using iPads, iPods, um, all those types of devices, but um, the key is that you can learn it anytime, anywhere. Um, we got, as I said before, we got started about um, three years ago. Um, we kind of learned about it um, through Elliot Soloway, and um, we went and uh, went ahead and uh, met with a, a teacher in Indiana and saw it in action, and that's that's pretty much what sold us. But the, the key to getting started is that getting uh, an administrative support, um, doing a lot of research, which we did, to, to make sure that this is what was going to be good for our students, and start a plan of action. Um, when we first started, we weren't using smartphones. We actually used PDAs, and in the middle of the year, we found out that ASUS, that the um, PDAs that we were using, they were no longer going to make them. So we uh, called up Verizon, and we started a, um, a, a small a pilot with the smartphones, and we, we found out that these, these were going to be great, and that's how we, we kind of got started with that. Um, professional development is very, very important. Um, visiting other schools in action, um, we've had easily over 100 schools at our school visiting to see how we're doing it. Um, professional development with training, and um, an MLD committee, and what MLD stands for is a mobile learning device. Um, we try to steer away from using the word smartphone at our school because um, what we've done is we've eliminated the, the uh, phone capability 
in the texting capability. So pretty much what we have is a small computer in, in every student's hand at our school. And it's, it's been a, a very, very good process. Um, some keys for implementation. Um, the biggest thing I, I always tell everyone is you have to see it in action. Um, when we got started, there were a lot of teachers that were kind of hesitant, but what we did was ha we had the, the small group, our group of teachers that started it, and we had those other teachers come and observe us using them. And when they came in and observed us, they found out, you know what, this is something we could use in the classroom and it could be very effective. Um, as I said before, the professional development is a must. Um, another thing I found out is teachers were talking more about sharing ideas and sharing lessons and um, teaching teachers was, was very, very important. Um, with our program, we have um, at my school, the intermediate school is a, a three through five building and um, every student in my school has a smartphone or an MLD and so we have over 500 devices in our, our um, district and next year with the upper grades we're going to bring your own uh, technology, your own device and I think that's going to be key. Um, one thing that I think is important with our program is that at an early age, and you have to remember I'm working with nine and ten year olds, um, we're teaching them um, uh, responsible use of these devices and so they know how to use those devices once they, they get into the, the middle school and the high school and I think it's really going to be a, a solid program when we, we uh, start that next year. Why mobile learning devices? Um, the, the big problem we had is, um, and I know this is a problem in a lot of school systems is that we didn't have a whole lot of computers in the classroom. We had, um, for example, in my classroom I have four computers and we had to set up certain times for kids to get on there and we weren't able to um, get all those kids on at all, you know, all the time. Um, the technology wasn't really up, up to grade and um, by using our, our smartphones, our MLDs, um, we upgrade those um, MLDs, um, uh, this year we're not, but last year we updated them and uh, we're, we're keeping up with the uh, technology through Verizon. Um, the expense of laptops and Wi-Fi and um, the, the big thing with the laptops, it was uh, a cart program where we were bringing the cart in and we we're only using them every once in a while. Well, with this, with this program that we're using, where we have those um, MLDs on their desks or in their pocket the entire day and when we switch classes they're with them or when we go on field trips they're with them and um, I think that's the key thing uh, to mobile learning and the broadband has been huge because I like to take my kids outside to do activities and um, that's, that's been the biggest um, impact for me. Classroom goals. Um, before, when we first started the program, um, we did not get E-rate funding and uh, what E-rate funding is, is funding through the government and for some reason with the E-rate funding, if you get it, you're not allowed to uh, uh, let the students take the devices home. Well, um, so the two years before we had E-rate funding, I allowed my students to take them home whenever they'd like and we never had anything stolen or broken and the kids were very, very responsible. Um, the whole point of our, our program was to level the playing field. A, a lot of our students don't have internet access at home. Um, they don't have word processing capabilities and then the apps that we give them. And the, the key was uh, leveling the playing field, the playing field, excuse me, and then access to the technology together. Um, we don't have to go to a lab anymore. Um, that lab is with us the whole day. In um, differentiating instruction, and I'm going to get into that in a little bit, but um, with the devices, we're able to differentiate instruction, and um, it is making a, a big difference. Um, it is amazing what happens when you give students the opportunity to be responsible. Um, a lot of teachers are um, at other schools are very apprehensive of, of letting the students bring devices or um, having those types of devices in schools. But what I learned, and as I said before, I work with um, nine and ten year olds and I've never had anything stolen, I've never had anything broken. 
the kids are not cheating. They're not. They're they're engaged. They are excited about learning, and that's what what school is all about. Um, positive impacts on learners. Um, as students are more engaged. Um, one example I have of this is um, on a Friday afternoon, I gave the students uh, a journal entry uh, to do to complete. And this the Friday afternoon, you know, you, kids are usually excited for the weekend, and uh, they're ready to go home and all that kind of stuff. And I had to remind when when we do the journal entry, I um, have my students they can go anywhere in the classroom, and I had to remind the students that it was time to go home. Um, for, for the weekend. Um, they were so engaged in what they were doing. And the key thing, too, is that the kids want to share. Um, when you give the students an individual device, you think, well, they're just going to keep to themselves. But that's, that's surely not the case. Um, they always want to um, share their projects, share their ideas, work, work with um, other students. And um, one nice thing that we have is um, we have document cameras in all the classrooms. And so we can easily put our MLDs underneath the document camera and, and share those so everyone can see them. Uh, the teachers are more engaged. They're excited about teaching. Um, one thing that you have to realize, too, is that these lessons, what we're doing is we're incorporating the curriculum that the state has already given us. And um, so we're not creating a whole new curriculum. We're using that curriculum, but we're using that device to carry out that curriculum. Um, and as I said, the time on task is, is quite amazing. It's almost eerie sometimes um, when I give them an assignment and that, that they're so engaged that it's, I mean, you could hear a pin drop in the classroom. Concerns. Um, when we first started the program, I, I didn't really know what to expect. It, it helped to go see it working in the classroom, but until you have it in the classroom, you're not really sure how it's going to work out. And I usually found out that, you know, this is where education is going. We need to have these devices in the classroom because um, these are the devices that the students are going to be using in the future. Um, as I said before, we've never had anything broken or stolen in the district. And um, I mean, that's over 500 MLDs. And I, I think that is very, very impressive. Um, we have state testing in Ohio. And we, in fourth grade, we always had the math reading, and we used to have the writing test. And when we had the writing test, I was really, really concerned that if the kids are able to use the MODs, that's great. But will that transfer over to pencil and paper? Because they need to be able to write when they um, take those, those tests. And they were writing just as much, actually more so, after using the MLDs because um, one, one feature on them is, especially for the special ed students, it has a spell check or a, a, word, a word box that pops up when they um, are having trouble spelling. And so they don't stop and um, get frustrated. They keep on working and um, they're getting their ideas down. And you have to remember, these are the devices that the kids are using at home and we need to accept that in education. The, uh, the MLDs are very motivating. Uh, the teachers have been very uh, creative. And as I said before, the, the staff has, has been communicating and, and sharing. And with the apps that we use, we use no, uh, GoNo apps. And um, we're able to make folders. And the teachers are able to share lessons throughout the district. So you can just pull out of folders and plug them into your, your lessons. And uh, the, the teachers have been more, more than willing to share and um, more student participation. I've noticed that um, students have, that maybe haven't been the most motivated students in my classroom, have become very motivated when using these devices. Um, it's, it's made a huge impact on my teaching. This is um, one of the applications that we have. It um, is through GONO, and it's called PicoMap. It's a, a webbing program. And um, we use this when we're doing uh, creative writing and just doing different writing projects. We also use it for vocabulary. And um, on the right side is a, it's called Sketchy. It's an animation program. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, as I said before, 
um, with the PICO map, we can use it to um, create um, vocab for different chapters or um, whatever way you really want to use them. I think the biggest thing for mobile learning is that when using these devices, we're making learning memorable. And when we make learning memorable, the kids are really enthusiastic, they're excited about it. It's not going back to the pencil and paper all the time. And um, the students are engaged in what they're creating. Everyone wants to share and participate. Um, one thing I also notice, especially in math, I, I teach reading uh, math and language arts. And um, in math, long division in fourth grade was really uh, difficult for a lot of students. And when we used the mobile learning devices, um, it seemed to make it easier. Um, we're using colors, we're using shapes, we're using uh, animation, and the, the kids seem to understand it a lot better. And I'm going to show you an example of this. This is a, a, a sketchy project that one of my students made. And each one of those squares is a slide. And if on their device, if you hit play, it'll go through all the steps. But the nice thing about this is that they can show me each individual step. They can, um, you know, see that those steps in action when they hit play. And I, you can easily say, oh, wait a second, we can do this with pencil and paper. But when they're doing it on the device, they're really engaged, they're really enthusiastic, and they're remembering what they're doing. And I don't have to keep on going over those different topics. Um, this is another um, sketchy project. Um, one thing with the mobile devices is they are mobile. Um, we're able to take the kids outside the classroom, which I like to do, and I know the, the kids want to get out of their seats. And um, I like to do a lot of scavenger hunts. Um, with Sketchy, what we do is um, we'll take the, um, I'll either take them outside or in the classroom, and um, we we'll use the camera feature. And on this project, we talked about geometric figures and shapes. And what they had to do is go around with their cameras and take uh, those pictures of those shapes and figures and then um, upload it into Sketchy. And then they had to illustrate it in words or numbers uh, of those different objects. And the kids are so excited to get outside and do these projects. And they come up with the most unbelievable ideas. Um, this is another project um, with geometry. And I actually took the pictures ahead of time, and I synced it to them. And what, what they were able to do is put the name of the, the figure and how many faces, edges, vertices. And um, let me go back real quick. Um, with our program, what, with GONO, um, what I'm able to do is go ahead and create projects and sync them to the students. And what they're, they're able to do is complete those projects and then sync them back to me. And then I can send feedback to them. Um, the nice thing is that in the morning, um, I just go ahead and have them sync. And whatever teachers send them a project throughout the school, it could be a, a special ed teacher, an enrichment teacher, or one of my cooperating teachers. They get all that information all at once. So we don't have to take time syncing throughout the entire day. And, um, that's, that's been a good quality. Um, by doing this, um, we can differentiate instruction. I can send different students different projects. And the nice thing about it is since they have their own individual devices, they are not able, or they don't really um, know what exact project everyone has in the classroom. So they don't feel bad about having something different. And as I said before, they're, they're so willing to share, and they're, they're really excited about their projects. Uh, the process of implementation takes time. Um, every, and if you follow me on, on Twitter, you, you, you probably noticed this, but every day um, there are articles out saying um, this school just bought uh, so many iPads or so many iPods or so many smartphones. And it kind of worries me when I read these articles because I'm hoping the districts take time and, and do the research. And what we did is we started out basic. We started out with a pilot program. Because the key is you have to have teacher buy-in. You have to have student buy-in. And if you don't have that, your, your, your program is not going to be successful. So like I said, I would, I would definitely start out basic with a, a pilot before you start out huge. I know 
a district near us um, just purchased 800 iPads for their district and um, I don't know I mean hopefully they did the research and they understand what they're getting into um, incorporating MLDs into the curriculum that you currently have set in place um, in Ohio we have a set of standards that we need to follow and um, as I, I've told teachers before we're not creating something new we're using those standards but we're using that device to illustrate those standards and the, the biggest thing is do not be afraid to let the students teach you. Um, the students use these devices at home um, and now we're allowing them to, to bring them to school but they know how to use these devices and they're really good at it and what I like to do in my classroom is whenever someone finds out something new I have them come up to the front of the room and share that with the classroom. I don't feel bad that maybe I didn't know how to do that and it really empowers the student. The students are really excited about sharing their ideas and, and helping the students in the classroom. So don't be afraid to let the students teach you. Um, mobile learning reaches all, all learners. Um, with our program, we use um, the audio, obviously. We can record things. Um, we have the students uh, recite their vocabulary or different, different things and um, listen back on those. And we use uh, Sketchy, which is an animation program, Pico Map, which is a concept mapping. Um, our devices are Word Mobile right now, or excuse me, are um, Windows based. So we use Word Mobile, Excel Mobile. Um, later on, we're, we're looking at possibly going in, into using Droid and all those types of things, which you can get a lot of free apps with those also. So um, as, as we progress, we're looking at different, different things. So, what I really mean by that, I don't think it's really the device, it's how you use the device. And um, I was at ISTE in, in Philadelphia a couple weeks ago, and um, there, I went to a lot of sessions that had a lot of great apps. So it, um, if you go to my website, I've had a lot of case studies. Um, I, we were involved with a, a mobile learning documentary um, through Verizon and that's also on there. I try to put lesson ideas, lots of websites, people are blogging about mobile learning. Mobile learning is uh, really huge right now. I put uh, Google Analytics on our, our website and we've had visits um, from all 50 states and 86 countries and that's just in one year. So it, it's um, quite amazing. Um, mobile learning is where education is really going. Um, here is my email. Um, if you would like to contact me about um, anything with mobile learning, I'd be more than happy to talk to you about it. Um, please follow me on Twitter. Um, I, I like to give lots of resources and um, I, I learned so much from my uh, PLN and um, they helped me out quite a bit and I, I thank, thank you for uh, coming. Uh, quite a few of you are on here I can see and that, uh, that makes me really feel good. Um, on the bottom is uh, my uh, mobile learning website and as I said before I try to put a lot of links on there. So um, what I'd like to do right now is kind of open it up to questions and um, we'll kind of go from there. Great Scott, thank you for the wonderful presentation, lots of great ideas. The chat room was all a flutter about things. Um, and there's a lot of questions I saw mentioned in the chat room so this is your time to ask them if you want to just raise your hand there's a little hand under the green arrow button and that way we can take things in order. So Rick, uh, we'll start with you if you'll just lift your microphone down at the bottom under audio and you can give your question to Scott. While we're waiting, um, Scott, I see one from Jane. What if a student cannot afford a, multi a mobile learning device? Uh, well, with our program, we provide the devices for them. Um, I listened to a session with uh, Shelly uh, Terrell and she she's done projects where she that the students didn't have the device, they, they were sharing devices and those worked out really well. Um, one thing that I've noticed with our program though is that if everybody has their own individual device, um, there's less likelihood of students Feeling or um, all those types of things because they, they really um, 
appreciate their device and they don't want to lose it because they don't want to go back to pencil and paper. Nice. Rick, are you able to join us now? Any other questions? questions at all? Yes, I am. I just okay, wanted Rick. to know if uh, you've got uh, videos of your class or seen it in action for those of us that can't get down to the states uh, to see the class in yes. action to see what happens. Yes, and that's that's on uh, my website if you want to check that out. Um, there's a blue box in the middle that has a documentary, and then there's some uh, video clips also. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Rick. If you want to put, you want to go ahead and put your hand down. Anybody else have questions? Lots of participation. I see some people joined us. Let me grab those permissions. Um, I saw another question. Um, how do you deal with insurance and viruses and filtering and all of that mess? That's from Is Carol that, Rainbow. Um, we really haven't had to deal with that too much with um, what we're using, but um, definitely that's going to open up some some issues this year with uh, bring your own device. Um, we're going to start out with some pilot teachers, and um, I'll get back to you with you on that. Um, It'll, it'll be interesting this year, and I think it's going to work out really well. A lot of districts are starting to do this next year. Awesome. Do we have more questions for Scott? I'm trying to look back through the chat to see if we see any more. Okay. Do you have your people, your students purchase insurance, and if so, how much does it cost? Um, what they they need to do, they sign a uh, contract, and they, they don't have to pay anything. But if they would lose the device, there and we have an acceptance use policy, and I'd like to change that responsible use policy, but um, it, it states it on our website, but um, the, the kids do not need to purchase anything. Awesome. Um, Brad Five Patterson had a question. What is your favorite app, Scott? Um, right now, I'd say probably sketchy because there's a lot of different things you can do with it, with importing pictures and importing a lot of things, and um, just being able to use the, the comic strip type idea with that. We'll try to get that posted as well if there's a site for that one. Um, some people talked about screens, chop, and show me. Are those similar to what you're using with Grow Me? Uh, no, um, the the key with our our program with our, okay, our no. with Gono is that it's a package deal with the, their apps. So, um, as I said before, when we sync those uh, projects to them, it all comes together. And I, I should have put a screen on here, but it had like there's a, a gold screen and it has little tabs on it where it, it has all the different applications on there that they have to click on, and. Um, it works really well that it's kind of a package where all those apps are included all together. Um, Tiffany had one, a question for you, Teach on the Edge. It says, with older students, how do you address the responsible use, social uses to avoid bullying, cheating, and time off tasks because of distractions? Um, I would say the biggest thing is when they, when they sign that contract, um, they realize that if they, they break those rules, they, they lose their device and they go back to pencil and paper. And um, I try to demonstrate appropriate behavior with my devices. And um, the biggest thing is when they sync their device, everything goes to my computer. So I can see if they're using things inappropriately and I show them that the first day. I, I bring them up to my computer um, to the um, project. Uh, put it up on the projector that I can see exactly what they're doing. So if they do anything inappropriately, they lose their privileges. And we actually, in, in one case, it, um, we had a student when we were doing a journal entry. Um, it looked like he was typing on his QWERTY keyboard, but what he was actually doing was uh, videotaping the classroom. He didn't do anything inappropriate, but obviously that wasn't the time to do it. So he lost his privilege, and, and um, the next time um, it was all pencil and paper and. Uh, that quickly stopped him from ever doing that again. Uh, a follow-up to that one question, they thought it was a great idea. She said, but how do you do that with you bring your own device? And I'm not sure if you can answer that because you all haven't gone to that method yet. Yeah. Um, with, I, I'm not going to be as much involved with bring your own device because it's going to be more with the junior high and high school. 
and since I'm in the intermediate school, all our kids have a device. But um, I'm definitely going to be involved um, with the process, and um, once I find more out, I'll, I'll definitely let people know. One of the questions earlier, um, Bill Belsey uh, asked, have you had any of your kids try to make their own simple mobile apps? Um, not yet, but um, I've heard of some different classrooms doing that, and I think that's a great idea. Definitely hitting that creative thinking, yeah. uh, higher order thinking. Um, one, let's see, Amber Judge asked, um, or no, maybe it wasn't her, it was Jane, do you have a preferred brand of smartphone? Um, we use uh, Verizon smartphones. Um, right now we're using the Fathom. And um, we, like I said, we've used a couple of different devices, but we're using a Fathom right now. And at some point, we'd like to possibly go to Droid, but um, we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, I just saw a question on here about, um, let me see if I can find it. Um, let's see here. Ah, well, I'll have to come back to that. It was about uh, a question about bringing your own device. I can't find it on here now. Is it, is it the one about syncing it? Because I think you Yes, know. yeah, that's it. Um, what we're going to be doing is using Google Apps. So um, they'll be using Google Docs and all those types of things in the, the high school. So they're not going to be using it the same way exactly as we do in the elementary um, classroom. But they'll, they'll still be able to collaborate and um, share their ideas, and the, the teacher will still be able to get that information through um, Google. Um, Bill just put up an interesting uh, tidbit that said 72 percent of cell phones sold are not smart. Yeah, um, obviously what we, we use are smartphones, um, but I, I don't know if you've heard of Liz Cole. We've had, um, she presented at our conference and she's done unbelievable things with just regular cell phones. I mean, any, any type of mobile device is going to benefit the classroom. Right. Um, Dan asked, Dan McGuire asked, do you use Moodle? Um, no, I haven't. Okay. I haven't used, well, we have it in our district, but I haven't used it a lot. And then there's another question, I'm not sure, Verizon Pantham? I guess that's the Verizon Pantham, maybe, is that the name of the phone that you're all using? Uh, Fathom, no. with the F. Oh, yeah. oh there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, ladies and gentlemen, any other questions for Scott? Please feel free to pick up the microphone. I know that nobody's had any hands raised, but okay. Well, can I, can I add a few things? Sure, absolutely. Um, there, when I was at at SC this year, I, I met a lot of uh, great people and. Uh, a few people that I talked with, uh, Tony Vincent has a great site um, that has a lot of different apps. So if you're using some different types of phones, um, he has a list in the blog, and that's on there. And um, also, um, I met with Scott Meach, and he has a website called EAR, and it's where teachers evaluate the apps and students evaluate the apps, and that's also on my website. But um, really do check out the website. I try to put as much information to help how people get started on um, mobile learning. Yeah, sorry, everybody's um, definitely waking up in my house right now. <laughs> um, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining us. Um, don't forget um, Scott's website is posted on the screen as well. I'm going to go ahead and make that live. Uh, you have web, some whiteboard privileges so that I believe you can now click on those and make those connections. Let's give Scott a round of applause with our, our applause icon for just a wonderful presentation and lots of great ideas. Oh, we have a hand raised, I think. Oh, no, they took it down. So, <laughs> oh, I just want to say... Yeah, thank you uh, for having me. Um, the Reform Symposium has been great. Um, unbelievable um, presentations and speakers, and I think this is 
this is just going to get bigger and bigger every year, and um, this is going to really uh, make a difference in education. Great, thanks. So those of you who are sticking around for the symposium, one, don't forget to uh, click on that link that uh, Lisa posted earlier for the um, the grand prize. I'll find that and post that back again. Um, remember that you can download these slides by going to File, Save, and then Save the Whiteboard. You can save them as images or as a PDF file. You can also save the chat room because there's lots of great questions and ideas here and links and that's done the same way. Um, next up in the Reform Symposium is a keynote with Tom Whitby, Stephen Anderson, Naomi Harmon, um, Laketa Johnson on transformative technology debate. Um, it's in room 47 and uh, I'll provide that link here. Let's see, I just grabbed that one. So for you to join that device. Uh, if you would like to post your blog listing to make that general connection with everyone here. And then don't forget Scott's connect your information is up on the screen and I'll post it in the chat room as well. If there are no other questions, I'm going to turn off the recording. Thank you all.